Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, are we on the verge of World War III? Reading the headlines over the past year, over the past month, over the past week, that's what we would be led to believe. We have headlines this week about Russia pulling itself out of the START Treaty with the United States. This is a nuclear non-proliferation treaty that limits the amount of nuclear weapons and delivery systems that can be used by each side. It's been in place for over 30 years, so now that's been removed. There's talk about deployment of nuclear weapons onto the battlefield. Sorry, I'm <laughs> losing my voice here a little bit. But what is this really going to erupt into World War III? So I want to turn your attention to this article right here. This is from Zero Hedge yesterday. It's titled, China Deeply Worried War in Ukraine Could Spiral Out of Control. And they have a few updates throughout the day here. I want to skip past those and go to the original story, which started right here. It says, after the weekend back and forth of warnings centered on the Biden administration's latest assertions that Beijing is mulling providing lethal aid to Russia in order to help the Kremlin execute its war efforts, Ukrainian President Zelensky has weighed in on the deepening Beijing-Moscow partnership. He warned that World War III is on the horizon if China begins supplying weapons. For us, it's important that China does not support the Russian Federation in this war. In fact, I would like it to be on our side. At the moment, however, I don't think it's possible. But I do see an opportunity for China to make a pragmatic assessment of what is happening here, he continued. Because if China allies itself with Russia, there will be a world war. And I do think that China is aware of that. So, I think this is a bit more of the posturing that we've seen from Zelensky here. I, it, this is part of the information warfare that's ongoing, propaganda war, whatever you want to call it. Because if he really believes this, he's completely out of touch. So this statement here, for China to make a pragmatic assessment. China has made a pragmatic assessment, and they decided to align themselves with Russia. And they did that a long time ago, before the war in Ukraine really even erupted, in my opinion, I don't think Russia would have invaded if they didn't know that China was allied with them. Then he says, because if China allies itself with Russia, again, they've already been allied. <laughs> they, they, they are allied with Russia. And he says, there will be a world war. Well, when people say that, they generally mean a kinetic war, meaning bullets are flying. It's all-out war between everybody on the face of the earth. We are not there yet. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily know that this conflict is going to lead to that. We certainly see a, world, a proxy war in Ukraine involving all of the nations of the world. But I think that if we have a world war, and I do believe that we do if we don't count the, the definition that we just, just gave, but if we talk on the cyber warfare front, on the economic, financial front, um, on the front of sabotage and psychological warfare, propaganda, all of those things, I believe that we are engaged in a world war. The sides have already been determined. You have the United States, Europe, Canada, Australia, Japan, South Korea, New Zealand, and then you pretty much have everybody else. You have Russia and China and India and Saudi Arabia, Brazil, South Africa, all the BRICS nations and all those nations that would join the BRICS nations. And so we've already seen the dividing line. The question is, will this proxy war, this proxy shooting war, we'll call it a shooting war, that's probably better able to convey what we're talking about when people talk about World War III rather than kinetic war. We'll call it a shooting war. But the shooting war in Ukraine, will it spill outside of Ukraine's borders and truly become World War III? That remains to be seen. I'm skeptical that that's where we're headed, but I want to come back down to the bottom of this article where it has some words from China's top diplomat. It says, 
some forces might not want to see peace talks. Excuse me, let me <laughs> turn that off, guys. Some forces might not want to see peace talks materialize. They don't care about the life and death of Ukrainians, nor the harm to Europe. And while I'm by no means a fan of China, it's an evil communist dictatorship, I can't necessarily disagree with that because if that were the case, Nord Stream pipelines would still be operational right now to the benefit of the people of Europe. Instead, they're not, and we know why they're not. So you have to, when you hear about you don't care, they don't care about the life and death of Ukrainians nor the harm to Europe, I can't say that I disagree with that. And then he says here, this is in bold, it says, they might have strategic goals larger than Ukraine itself. And guys, that says it all right there. That's all we need to know. Because all of these nations have strategic goals much, much bigger than Ukraine itself. This isn't a war about Ukraine. I know we read about that in the news, and we've talked about this before. This is much, much bigger than Ukraine. Ukraine is just the shooting war battlefield where this is taking place right now, but this is a much bigger war with different strategic goals for everyone involved. But what is the main objective of this war? What is this really about? What is this conflict about? I would submit this conflict, like a World War III, is about all the marbles. It is about United States military and economic dominance over the globe. So while the United States doesn't have this impregnable global empire, financially they are able to control the nations of the world through sanctions, through threats of kicking you out of the SWIFT system, through use of the petrodollar, through use of numerous military bases all over the world, and countries like Russia and China and the nations aligned with them are saying, we don't like this anymore. We want to break free of this, have our own economic system, our own trading system, not using this depreciating U.S. dollar as our means of trade, but using things like gold and oil, commodities of real value that hold their purchasing power, maintain their purchasing power, because that's to our benefit. And in the past, when nations have said, we're going to go this different route, we're not going to trade our oil for dollars, like, say, Iraq or Libya, nations that have decided to do that found that they were quickly <laughs> taken care of by the United States. But this, this time it's different, because this time the opponent is Russia, a nuclear superpower. And they are aligned with China, who, who the United States has outsourced an enormous amount of manufacturing to China. We are dependent for parts of our military supply chain on China. And our military has pointed out that this has been a threat in the past. But we've allowed it to happen because of greed and corruption. We want cheaper products in the United States, so we were willing to do that and put ourselves at risk, just as Europe outsourced its energy needs to Russia and found itself at the mercy of Russia. The United States has done the same thing in regard to China with all of these products that we rely on. Something like 90% of the antibiotics, 90% of the rare earth metals, all sorts of components that are necessary to create vital pro pro products vital to the national security interest. So a lot of the supply chain is wrapped up in China. So really, what are, what's going to happen here? <laughs> you know, is the United States really going to involve itself in a shooting war with these nations over Ukraine? Will this erupt into... A, a true World War III? I think the answer is no. Now, there may be an instance where nuclear weapons are used in a limited regional capacity. I don't think we're, we're going to see all-out nuclear war. We're definitely not going to see all-out war that destroys all of humanity. The Bible is very clear that that does not happen. But 
could we see a limited use of nuclear weapons in this conflict? We could, and we've talked in the past about a war game that was played out just a few years ago with this exact same scenario in Washington, and it ended with escalation by both sides and use of nuclear weapons that led to the death of over a billion people. So that could happen here. What is most likely to happen? Well, what I think is most likely to happen is we are going to see a weapon of mass destruction used, but not on the battlefield in a shooting war. We'll see that weapon of mass destruction will be a financial weapon of mass destruction. You know, Warren Buffett has talked in the past about derivatives, meaning all, it, we, we have all these derivatives. We've become so financialized in the Western world that we have all of these paper derivative contracts on everything you can think of. It adds up to trillions and trillions of dollars. It's multiple multiples in size of the stock market, of the economy, and it's a house of cards waiting to fall down. And no doubt Russia and China are aware of that. And I think the strike to the United States and its allies will come from a number of fronts, but one of those is going to be backing a new currency with gold or simply saying we're going to trade in gold. We're going to trade our oil for physical gold. We're going to set a, a firm ratio of gold to silver and suck that supply out of the West. When they, do, when they do that, if you say, well, we'll give you two barrels of oil for one gram of gold, or we'll give you an ounce of gold for every 10 ounces of silver, then you're going to cause those metals to go east to Russia, to China, and it's going to break these paper markets because these, the whole Western financial system is a fraud. It's a big Ponzi scheme based on printed pieces of paper with no value whatsoever. Once that's exposed, the whole system collapses. And what is United States power built on? Well, its military power is a derivative of the financial power of the United States. They can afford to have all these bases operational around the world because of the financial power that they wield. But they also are able to use this financial power against other nations by through sanctions, through kicking you out of the SWIFT system, all of these different ways that they go about uh, using that leverage against other nations. And other nations are collectively standing up to that primarily through the BRICS nations. And so I see that's going to come to an end. We've already seen Saudi Arabia has said, we're going to trade our oil in other currencies. They've even talked about accepting gold. We've seen Ghana talk about, we will trade our gold for oil because they don't have, that's their abundant resources, gold. So we're seeing this new trade system being set up. And how's it all going to end? Well, it's going to end in what people have been seeing coming for a long, long time, which is the collapse of this unsustainable fiat paper currency system and financial system that doesn't produce things of real value. It doesn't produce lumber and oil and energy and all of the things that we need to get by. I mean, it does to some degree, but most of Oh, there are a whole lot of people employed in the business of trading pieces of paper and not actually doing anything of real value for people. Those days are soon coming to an end, and I believe it's going to come when Russia, China, and their allies decide to make these moves. And we've talked about this in some videos in the past, so I'll try to pull some of the links and put those in the description as well as pin those to the comments below if you need to watch any of those to look at maybe exactly how all of this will play out. But I think ultimately this is about striking at the financial heart of the United States of America. And that would explain to us, if that happens, one of the reasons that the United States is not mentioned in Bible prophecy. Perhaps it's because the United States is no longer the dominant superpower it has been 
in decades past. And of course, I believe that the rapture will be the ultimate uh, nail in the coffin of U.S. power in the world. Once the rapture happens, that will f <laughs> once and for all force all of these things uh, to come to fruition. You'll lose so many people, so many people of productive value, and the economy will collapse, the military will power, the United States will collapse. But what do I know? <laughs> Those are just my thoughts. What do you think? Leave your comments below. Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think maybe this will erupt into World War III? It definitely appears in many ways like World War I, where we saw this regional conflict start to bring in allies of each nation, one after another, until we had a world at war. Could we see the same thing happen here? Again, we are not yet in the era where mutual assured destruction has come to an end, where it's able to be circumvented. So I still think that it's highly unlikely we are going to see an all-out World War III shooting war as a result of this, at least in the near term. Maybe one day, maybe this will go on for years, and one day it will erupt into that. But I think in the meantime, there will be a financial weapon of mass destruction deployed against the United States. I've long said I think most likely that would be Russia trading its oil for physical gold and breaking the Western financial system as a result. Uh, just trading it, trading its oil at a discount for physical gold, thus causing people to want to make that uh, the spread between the difference, and they'll suck up all that physical gold. They'll bid up the price. You're either going to have have to let that free float and have a collapse of the U.S. dollar, or you're going to have to suppress that and collapse the U.S. domestic oil industry. Those are the two choices in that situation. I think. Putin's been setting this up for some time now. Wouldn't surprise me to see that happen any day. There, it's possible that it's been go ongoing to some degree. We've seen a lot of metal going to India in the form of silver and gold over the past year. And we know that they have been a key trading partner in Russian oil. So it could be happening already. It may not be this big announced event. But I believe that that is ultimately where all of this is headed. I don't know that we're going to see a shooting World War III, but I think we may see a World War III fought on these other fronts. And, you know, I believe that the, 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 weak, the weak party in this war is the United States and its allies through their fraudulent paper financial system that's finally going to come to an end. So... Again, what do you think? Leave your comments below. Let me know. In the meantime, make sure to like and share this. And God willing, I will see you on Friday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, Make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.